and one of the things that's really interesting about this piece is that we think of that there's something going on about um, permanence and temporality in this piece because we know that those blankets, I mean, everything will wear out, right? In, in time, everything will wear out, the bane of art preservation. Um, but that the bronze, it feels much more like a permanent substance than the cloth of the blankets. And so that, that sense of, it makes, can make us think about time and the passage of time in particular ways. That sense of, of teetering is so interesting because of, I guess because we expect permanence in a piece we see in the museum, right? It, should, it shouldn't be uh, whimsical, it shouldn't be about to fall over, but this piece is, is teasing us in that way. In some ways this would be a really different piece, and I think one that would interest me less if it were just a stack of bronze blankets, that there's something about that contrast that catches me and, and really pushes me in my thoughts. It is such an interesting idea of trying to, um, to, to make sort of solid and permanent something that we think of as soft, but it, and also fixing this moment in time. But the blankets do seem, again, it, it's a little bit, there's something weird about it. Let's just say it, it's weird. It's weird to have bronze blankets. And it also resonates with, this, with other practices of bronzing that we might think of as everyday objects. At what point do we start to think about the base of this as part of the piece? Because it is really easy to just focus on the blankets for all of the reasons that we've been talking about, but that the base is also part of the piece. Um, if you check the tag, you'll see that it says specifically reclaimed red cedar base. So it, it wants us to know a few things about the base. It wants us to know that it's cedar as opposed to just saying wood. It wants us to know that it's reclaimed as opposed to just saying cedar. So there's something about that that somebody thought was an important thing for us to understand about this piece, even as um, I think it's very easy to sort of not even think about that as part of the piece. So it's, I also think of cedar just as a very Northwest tree. For, for folks who have lived in other places, um, cedars are more a part of our natural environment and more uh, maybe a part of the way that we associate with nature here than other places. So, so cedar has all of this particular resonance. One is cedar chests. Cedar is where we keep things. But this idea of, of the wood that is taken from any number of utilitarian purposes and brought into this, the same with the blankets, but also that contrast between what seems so warm and comforting about the blanket, but you get the feeling that the bronze part is actually going to be cold to the touch, right? That there's a, a a contrast between that, but that these are actually still malleable, right? Those blankets, they're blankets. They, you, could, you could move them around. These, not so much. So there are a lot of places where this piece is already working in contrasts. The way it's sitting now, the whitest part of this blanket is out front, or the cream colored part of this blanket is out front, so that the color is a little bit more buried here, which I think adds to that softness. It suggests randomness in a lot of different ways, right? How obsessive is the way the blankets are folded and placed? Now we know for the bronze ones, right? Somebody made definite decisions about how permanent bronze was going to look. And yet it is hard not to look at folded blankets and think, oh, you should just you know, fold them and throw them in a stack, right? That there's something about our own experience that makes us feel like this is really that, it, that this is just casually put out there and that it could change in some way. And it is, you can just see the bottom half of the label. So it says Endleton Woolen Mills, which any of us good Oregonians will fill in the P and say Pendleton, right? Um, Pendleton, Oregon, registered US patent office, 100% virgin wool. Now, what do we make of that? We all want to know about these blankets. The longer you look, the more you want to know. Um, but I want to come back to that label. I mean, she could have easily folded or oriented these blankets without the label showing. What does it add to the piece? That there's a lot of variety in these blankets. They're not the same object repeated. They are each individualized blankets. I don't think that there are any two of them that look quite precisely exactly alike. There's something about, this is such a, I mean, art is usually va vi visual, but this is really tactile because when you think about um, 
the curves of it, and that comes back to that sense of what's random and what's permanent, the, the curves of the folded blankets versus the squareness of the wood pieces that make up the base. There's that, that sense of contrast keeps carrying through. 